Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. I'm your host Ashwin. I'm joined by Varun. It has been a couple of weeks since I've been able to join. I've been out traveling, so Varun and DJ have been on the show without me, but it is peak IPL season. And I'm happy to be back. Varun, how are you doing, man? Where each team has played about six games. Some one or two have only played five. Yeah, how are you feeling? I'll, we'll, we'll do the full rundown. We'll talk about the week. But uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a mixed week, I guess, in IPL, if you think about it. Some interesting results, some not so surprising, some pretty one-sided games, some pretty close ones. So how are you feeling? Yeah, I, I almost feel like the previous week was a little bit more exciting. I'm not sure if now the pitches are starting to tire out. I don't know if the games are going to get a little bit slower. But as I look through the week, we still had a lot of matches almost touching 200. So it is still up there. But like you rightly said, some games were uh, much slower. And, uh, and and I think we're going to see that a little bit more. So keep that in mind as you pick your fantasy teams. Yeah, and I will talk the fantasy update in just a second. I think it's very interesting, right? I think if I'm trying to, I was trying to summarize the week a little and where we are, and we will talk about this, Varun. I'm going to put you on the spot because we're getting kind of close to what we believe will be Agarkar announcing Team India's squad, or at least the probables, if you will, or 15 for the World, uh, the World T20, T20 World Cup, as it's now called. And so maybe next week, about six or seven more IPL games in, probably eight more IPL games in, we will we will go out there and go out on a limb and uh, list our problems. Now, Varun, you've got yours basically identified already, right? Yeah, I have. I've written the 15 down this morning. But what does that say about the importance of IPL performances then? Like, what if somebody I mean, has another breakthrough week? The thing is, I think it's important to note that I do this in my head every day, every yeah, morning. Yeah, that's fair. It's the first time I've put it down on paper. So that's fair. I don't know whether IPL plays a part or not, but I do it every morning when I wake up. What is the that's 15? Fair. Who are the three people that I'm slotting in and out? I don't have the final 15 yet. I'm going to give it another week. Hopefully by next Monday when you guys listen to this, DJ Ashwin and I will all have our list of 15 probables. And I believe... Ajit Agarkar is going to release it first week of May sometime. So Got it. it's important for us to get it out there before him so that we can see who's right and who's wrong. Yeah, I love that you said the life of an Indian cricket fan is that just coming up with lists of squads every morning. I think that's the most accurate thing anybody's ever said. Right, Varun, let's start with the IPL points table and then we'll talk a little bit about the the Fantasy League points table and I'll we'll put in our show notes the league code we're playing uh, on a different website this year, but we'll get into that. IPL points table, not... Not a ton of not a ton of surprise, if you will. Rajasthan leading at the leading from the front, just the one singular loss at this point. So five wins, reasonably healthy net run rate. The loss obviously came to Gujarat earlier in this week, which was also very close, which we'll talk about. KKR also up there uh, with four out of five. So just again the one solitary loss for KKR. But look uh, at their net run rate against and their Delhi. Net run rate thanks to the hundred and six run win against Delhi is through the roof. You then have CSK in fourth, another big win today against uh, the Mumbai team. Uh, Sunrisers in, uh, sorry, CSK in third, Sunrisers in fourth. Middle of the table is very, very packed, if you will, with Sunrisers four, Lucknow five, Gujarat six, all tied. And then you have kind of languishing at the bottom are the four teams. We we probably predicted two of them, right? Punjab, Mumbai, Delhi, and Bangalore. Let's talk to me a little bit about that high level, Varun. Delhi and Bangalore aren't really hugely surprising, unfortunately, to be at the bottom. Mumbai is probably a bit of a surprise, but there's still two wins on the trot after starting with three losses. Was that right? Did they start with three in a row last? Yeah. And they won two. Yeah. Yeah. And then they lost. So as we're recording on Monday morning. And so yes. the CSK versus Mumbai game is just finished last night. And so they lost that, but they had been picking up momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Any, what are the major surprises for this? Obviously not Delhi. I think Delhi being in ninth, maybe you could call a surprise because you publicly said they're going to finish in 10th. So that might uh, be a shocker. But yeah. And what are the other surprises? To you? I think Sunrise is at fourth right now. That's the other surprise. I... I, I think they would have been mid-table in my opinion, but there's still a long way to go. So that's the one I'd call out. Lucknow has this tendency of finding a way to win and get in the top four the last couple of years. So i will be watching them also closely. And then the other one I'd say is not really a surprise is Punjab. Like always start off well, find a way to get very close, but somehow just never make the cut. Yeah, and you often talk about how cricket is such a momentum sport. And as you think about Lucknow having lost two in a row, uh, at Sunrisers having one, one, two in a row, you just have to see momentum shift sometimes in these leagues. It's going to be very, very interesting. But we will cover quickly the games of the week. Varun, 
we normally wait till the end to do a fantasy league update. I will go ahead. We have a, gosh, 75. No, sorry. Yeah, we have more than that, about 80 people playing our fantasy league. Um, and there's always time to join. If you're playing, we're playing on Fan- Fanzania, Fanzania, however you pronounce it, uh, this year. And we're happy to share the league code. It's on Twitter already, but check the show notes out as well. And yeah, I mean, Varun, I'm not doing well. Let's start with that. I'm having a pretty horrendous season. I just, I just, again, I, I've been picking Quinton de Kock and I backed Jesswal in every time except in the thing in the one game he did well. And I backed Rohit in most games that he got a century as soon as I dropped him. So I, among the three hosts, I'm in the bottom in 37th place. I scroll up a little, DJ's in 26th, Varun, you're in 20th. Not bad. The best of the three of us. So I have to give you credit for that. Yeah, it's best of the three, but 20th was like there's 19 people ahead of me. So that's a bit rough. And fantasy is weird, man. Like you back a guy for six games and then you finally be like, all right, I'm taking him out. And then he scores the seventh. So there is no formula. Unfortunately, that has happened to me repeatedly this year, but it's a long season. Just got to hang in there. I'll give a quick shout out to our top three. Our number one team is uh, Uncle Sam. Team name is Uncle Sam. The manager's name is Uncle Sam as well. Number two is a team called Bits Pieces. We've had a team called Bits and Pieces before. However, the manager this year is somebody named Kapil Sharma. If you are the Kapil Sharma, the comedian, we would love to, to, to make sure we know that. I'm not sure that's actually true. But if you are, just reach out. It'd be great to, to know. And number three is Jitin's 11, uh, Jitin Prakash. I mean, gosh, the top two are, have about a 1,200 point lead over even the guy in third place. So it is. It's going to be a, a tough battle to catch. But remember, there's some boosters you can use. I haven't really gotten into the, all those quite this year. But yeah, there's some interesting stuff uh, on and good ability to catch up. Right. So Varun, like you said, it's Monday morning, uh, I guess, April 15th. And uh, last time you recorded was about a week ago. So why don't we just do a quick rundown on some of the highlights that happened from the games of this week. And it started with Chen- the Chennai Super Kings playing KKR. KKR, who, again, has had a good... This is a good season so far. Had a pretty horrendous outing this game. Um, 137 for nine in their 20 overs. They're persisting with the Sunil Narayan experiment. How are you feeling about that? I mean, it, it, it worked. It absolutely destroyed Delhi. I think it makes sense. You know, we've thought about it a lot. It just makes sense. The guy's not going to waste balls. He's going to have an attacking approach. And if he gets out in the first over, it's okay. And if he plays till the sixth over, you may have won the game. So I think it's an approach that is... Totally worth it. I think KKR is doing very well. Just my only challenge with them is that it's very, very heavily dependent on either Salt or Narayan. I'm going to club them as one. And Russell. That's it, right? So if these two sets of buckets kind of have an off day, they find, I think they find it impossible to win. Yeah. And what's happened so far is that both have done really well. So I think that is the call out for me. But on this game, like, Chennai Super Kings, man, they were just all over them. Jaddu, great to see him back in the wickets, picked up three. Tushar Deshpande, who he loves to stick with, also picked up three. And then I was saying this to some friends that Ruturaj has to come good. It's been half the tournament. He's going to come good. He played a blinder. Um, you know, yesterday versus Mumbai, he played a stable, solid innings to get them across the line. You're going to see Captain Gaikwad coming into his own. Because remember... The final is at Chepok, and Ruturaj has to get them to that final for one man. Did you, did I hear you say Mahi loves to persist with Tushar Deshpande? Yeah, yeah, Mahi, Mahi sets the field, Mahi sets the ball. Okay, cool. Just making sure, just making sure. Ruturaj just has one job, which is bat well to win the game. That's it. Everything else is Mahi. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, he's he made a comment about that earlier, and we'll come to the the game where he had three six three sixes in a row. But I think Ritraj made a comment about the young wicket keeper behind the stumps who who came out and hit them some, some sixes. So very exciting. I mean, great to see him back in form and a pretty clinical win for the CSK team. So I mean, the only other thing I shout out is Shivam Dube. He's now got fifteen at the time of recording the sixes in this tournament. He just seems to be hitting the cleanest kind of just beautiful across the line. Shots, it's just it's just gorgeous to watch. Varun takes you back to Yuvraj, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I've always said this. Uh, every time I see him, I think of UV and I get excited. So uh, hopefully we're going to see more of Dubey. But I just think that ability between over 7 and 16 for him to hit sixes every over is is game-changing. That's what wins you games. Indeed. Okay, I'm not going to ask you, you to give anything else away, but in the 15 that you wrote down today, or the yes. 15-ish, was Dubey there? Yes, okay. Dubey. Dil Dubey. All right. 
Uh, that was the first match of the week. Um, uh, second one, we went uh, on to Chandigarh, where Punjab got to play Hyderabad. I mean, I was starting to think about the themes I'm seeing from these teams. And it was, this just seems to be, these teams, these two teams seem to be the teams that bring out the relatively less known Indian players and just absolutely push them to the forefront. And if you've, you know, haven't seen it yet for Punjab, I'm of course talking about uh, Ashutosh Sharma and Shashank Singh. I mean, just absolutely incredible stories. They've both batted well. They've also batted well as a pair for multiple games at this point. But in this game, it actually was Nitish Reddy. Varun, interesting, very, very interesting to see. uh, Obviously, from the name, I'm assuming he's a local boy. I don't know too much about Nitish Reddy. But great to see Hyderabad picking a young guy and him coming in and making 64 runs with the bat. We know he has the ability. He He bought three overs as well, picked up a wicket. I mean, he's 20 years old. Uh, how great is that to see? Just this is the beauty of the IPL, right? When it comes down to it. Yeah, exactly. And I think Nitish Reddy, if I'm not mistaken, is an all rounder in the yeah. Ranji. Yeah. And so he not only bats, he also bowls. But five sixes, four four strike rate of over one seventy. He basically saved that innings because Head and Sharma got off to a start, and then it just crumbled. Makram out for zero, Tripathi out for eleven, Klassen out for nine. And so I think if Nitish Reddy wasn't in that team, I think they would have lost pretty badly. Now, as it turns out, they won by only two runs. But yes, like you said, full credit to him. And then, like like you rightly pointed out, on the flip side, Punjab, their top order is just not clicking. In fact, Dhawan in the most recent game was injured and I think he's out for a week. So, could yeah. miss up to two matches. At least a week, yeah. Yeah, and so, Sam Karan and Raza kind of had a fight back. But Shashank Singh and Ashutosh Sharma... Between them, I think was striking at a combined of 200. Yeah. And they got them to within two runs, man. Like, every time I kind of watch Punjab, I'm just seeing Shashank and Ashutosh Sharma yeah. hitting. And it's happening multiple times. Maybe it's a case for them to move up the order a little bit because it's almost really leaving it down, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ashutosh Sharma is coming in at number eight. Yeah. And hitting 33 or 15. So I think there's a case there. Yeah. I mean... To your point, one is question. One is always, do you bat your best batters higher up? Should you should they be getting more game time, right? And this this is a no brainer to some extent. Second one, Varun, the question is about Johnny Bairstow or Bonnie Jairstow, as DJ likes to call him sometimes. Just absolutely having a, a disastrous IPL. It's happened to him before in in multilateral tournaments and in the IPL in particular. But he just goes through, when he goes through these lean patches, he just looks absolutely horrendous. It's right? really lean, man. Like, yeah. I think Punjab, the challenge is Livingston was injured. Apart from Rabada, none of the overseas players are clicking. And you need Bairstow to give you those starts, right? Just capitalize the power play. I, I feel like the T20 game is going more towards being a power play specialist. And then you should get out after that. So Bairstow just has one simple task and he's just not being able to manage. Yeah, I mean, he ended up playing the next game as well. Uh, and we'll we'll talk about that. But Raza was the one who got dropped, which feels a little bit harsh. Uh, understanding, yeah, understanding how Bairstow, what the role he, and how explosive he can be. But but good win for Hyderabad. You have to give that to them. The Punjab lower order looking as good as they are, getting to within two runs. And Hyderabad still managing to get, managing to get over. I mean, Bovi picked up a couple of wickets. Pat Cummins has looked good. Uh, so overall, good game. And with that, we went to what I thought was a very interesting Rajasthan Royals versus Gujarat Titans game. And the reason I thought it was interesting uh, a little bit is when Shubman Gill was talking, I think it was to Harsha. Uh, I, Harsha said something like, I have to admit for a moment there, I thought we, you guys may have left it a little bit too late. And Gill said something to the effect of, with Gujarat, you should not, you should never think that. Or with GT. Yeah, think. I mean, almost like, I think he was trying to be funny. But he's new to this. So to me, it came about came out a little bit cocky. But like, you're telling Harsha, don't think that again. Yeah. Like, it's just, he needs to work on that a little bit in my opinion. But yeah, man, look, when you've got people like Tewatia and that team, you should not be counting them out because Gil is getting you the starts that you need. And he is proving the case for himself, right? 72 of 44 is a very, very solid inning. Just got out due to... Chehel's brilliance, right? Just pulled it a little bit wide and got him stumped. Yeah. But after that, Wade, Abhinav Manohar, Vijay Shankar, these are not names that necessarily inspire the confidence. So they've brought Shah Rukh Khan back in. I think it's a positive mood. 
yeah. uh, move from them. Devatia, of course, is good. And Rashid Khan, man, on his day, it changes. The game. So what 24 of 11 kind of signal that I'm here or I'm here to stay or I'm, I'm back. I don't know what he was signaling. But yes, when Rashid Khan picks up the bat and goes well, you're more often than not going to win the game. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, just great to see him just holding it down at the end. Even when Tevatiya got run out, Rashid basically, he had it covered. I mean, disappointing, honestly, uh, at the end from the bowler standpoint. Right? If you look at Avesh went for 12 runs and over, yeah, he picked up a wicket, put 48 in his spell. Kuldeep went for 41. Kuldeep actually was, the only highlight was three wickets, but it was expensive. Chehel picked up a couple, but expensive. I mean, yeah, just just great to see. And Varun, spare a thought for Riyan Parag, right? Although this was Rajasthan's only only loss to date. He's currently, whatever the color is of the purple cup, well, the orange cap runner-up. So he's the second in line for it. Uh, but he's hit 18 sixes in his 284 runs so far in the tournament. I mean, if anybody said in the lineup of Samson, Butler, Jaiswal, that Riyan Parag would be the standout six games ago before the start of the tournament. I mean, none of us had called it, right? Yeah, and shows the maturity, shows the stability. We talked about this, DJ and I as well. Uh, highest scorer on multiple occasions. Now when he walks in, you have the confidence that despite the top three, they're still going to make a big score. And then don't forget, you've got Hetmeyer, um, Jurel. I think in one game they played Rovman Powell. So they've got the thing below Parag as well, right? So I think he's just batting at the perfect position. And he's realized that my contribution to this team can be significant. And sometimes that that's all it takes. Let me ask you, I, mean, I, I, I said I wasn't going to, but I will ask you again. Sanju Samson? In your probable no, too, 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 too much debate. We have to leave that for next week. Okay, it's, fine. It's so close that we need to see another two games of all the keepers. I mean, that, that's the thing. And I think the most interesting conspiracy theory that's very sad that I read is Jarrell hasn't actually got a lot of time to bat. And Samson as skipper just seems to be devoting him. Now, I don't think he's doing that because he, I don't think Drew Jarrell is a threat yet for the T20. No. Set up just because he does, he hasn't done enough of it. But anyway, Sanju Samson is, is, Forcing selectors to ask the right questions. When you said too many keepers, Don is the other one you're talking about, bring it back. I mean, the young keeper who can hit at a strike rate of 500 I, and, and who's got guns for biceps. Like, if you have a checklist, who is meeting that checklist today? Have you heard the noise when he walks up to that? I mean, Dude, I have not only heard the noise, I, I was telling somebody, I have... Now in the last 10 days, ever since that Delhi game, which he lost, yeah. I spend about eight hours a day sleeping, eight hours a day working, and eight hours a day watching Thala Reels on Instagram. Perfect. I cannot do anything else. I have got the best Tamil songs now in my head for his entry. I'm waiting for it. Like, I just can't do anything else. This is my life for the last 10 days. It is unbelievable. And we're not even talking about a CSK game at the moment. So we will come to it. But RCB ended up making 196 runs against the Mumbai Indians. This was uh, at the Wankhe Day. There was a few games at the Wankhe Day back to back. RCB ends up making 196 for eight. Uh, you know, with, they're at, with a rare failure, three of nine, which is again not a good look to eat up nine balls and only make three runs, but fine. Uh, Rajas Patidar batted himself back into form, made a 50. Dinesh Karthik, again, just lower order. Is He's also one of the young wicket keepers in the base. Did you, did, did you see his shots? I don't yeah, know if you watched it. I saw some of them. I couldn't watch the game live, but I saw the highlights. Like, how many runs? He's from 53. 53. I think at least 40 out of those 53 runs came from behind the keeper. Yeah, he just great. kept doing that. And yeah. Rohit kept saying, put a third man. Then Hardy kept saying no. Apparently, oh, really? I read this. I read this. I read this. I don't want to quote that that actually happened. I read this. That Rohit kept saying, put the third man. Hardy kept saying no. And then he kept hitting it there. And then oh, Rohit actually walks up to him in front of Kishan and said, prepping for the World Cup, right? Like, Yeah, I heard that. Like, that got caught. And, and then Kishan is looking at Rohit. Like, Dude, I hear as well. Like, it, it was ridiculous. But yeah, so keepers in every team seem to be making uh, a play at claiming their stake. But it is. Why not? It's, an, it's the only open slot, I would say, today. Yeah, so about 196. And Ishan Kishan thinking, I have to respond. Uh, I mean, makes a brilliant 69, but the highlight of that game was Sky is back. I mean, yeah, he had a failure after that again, but 52 of 19 balls. I mean, 
he doesn't, it's zero, it's all or nothing, zero or a hundred with this guy, right? If, he, if when he's out of form, he's out of form. But yeah, and that's T20, right? Like if you're going to make an impact, do it like 52 of 19. And if you are not going to make an impact, don't suck up balls for it. That's the way I see it. That's what Sky seems to be in the mold. I think him getting back is very important for India. And I also think as the tournament progresses, you're going to see that when Sky scores, Mumbai wins. When Sky doesn't score, Mumbai struggles. I, I feel like that's where it's going. Yeah, very, very interesting. Or right, that's about half the matches of the week. Why don't we take a very quick break? Um, you'll hear some messages from our sponsors, and then we will be right back. This is the Edison Sledges Cricket Podcast. Don't go anywhere. We are very pleased to announce a, a Dagwale Moment Contest. So... The contest is basically you guys who are all playing cricket, diving around, taking catches, diving into your crease. I mean, we see Instagram reels of people playing uh, cricket in, in mud and playing cricket in, 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 in rivers and all of that. So what we want you to do is to send us your pictures where you're wearing those stained jerseys with those Sukha Dag with the hashtag Sukha Dag out and tag surf XL. India on Instagram and tag one tip one hand and at the end of that contest which we'll announce the winner of on the 15th of April episode during the IPL so tune in then so it's going to run for about a month you will have a chance the lucky winner will have a chance to win Surf Excelmatic Liquid and cricket equipment so it's a pretty cool contest so make sure you get your entry in don't forget you need to send us a picture of you wearing those jerseys, clothes, whatever, with those tough dried stains, with the hashtag Sukha Dag out, tag Surf XL India, and tag us. Welcome back to the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. We love doing this. The IPL is just absolutely crazy. There's so much to cover, so many things to talk about. We know we won't get to all of them, but we definitely try our best. Varun, the one bright spot for us as Delhi Capitals fan this week came in Lucknow against the Lucknow Super Giants team. And yeah, Lucknow got out all out for 167. I mean, at one point, they were 94 for seven. Thanks to, in large part, Kuldeep Yadav picking up three. Khalil, I mean, is Khalil in your probable list? At this point, I'm just asking you what the whole list is. <laughs> I can confirm that Khalil Khalil is not. not. Is Arshdeep there? Because if you're putting it in left arm, no, quick, dude, Khalil dude, is I'm, better. Dude, I'm not saying anymore. Right, you're fine. just going to copy my team and the next Sunday will be like, yeah, I'm not going to remember and then I'm going to watch another week of IPL and have the, the most short-term bias and just pick whoever does well in the next week. That's how this stuff goes. But yeah, 167. I mean, full full credit actually to the strategic think tank of Lucknow as well. They're 94 for seven. And they used the impact sub rule to, to beef up the batting and brought in Ayush Padoni instead, which is which is I, not the ideal use case, but is very much a use case you can lean in on if you absolutely need to. Makes a great half century. Uh, and then fortunately, Delhi made one very interesting change. New but guy came. Just, yeah. just before you talk about so. The reason the Ayush Badoni thing is more significant in hindsight is because till this game, Lucknow had never lost when they Defending had 160. Yeah. Never. 13 yeah. out of 13 games. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to play the stats. you got to play the odds. And look, Ayush could have got out for 10. But the thing is, you got to try. And it clicked, right? He was the only guy who really who, who scored for them and got them to 167. So at that point, Lucknow is thinking... Job star, yeah, and yeah, that's against a number ten team. The only other one, that, the only team that did this early was Delhi with Abhishek Porel. They brought him in as the extra batter. In the, I think it was the first game of the season. So it's great. To, it is great to see. I'm very encouraged by teams uh, owning the strategy and uh, just choosing to use the impact. You know, you have a base plan for your impact player, but then you uh, you adapt and you you figure it out. But then Varun, Prithvi Shaw looked decent. Warner got out quickly. At number three, walked in a new guy making his IPL debut. I think his first ball was a dot ball. Second ball, first runs of the IPL were a six. And Jake Fraser McGurk came in to make a statement. I mean, five sixes in his half century, partnered with the captain, Rishab got who got 41. And then Delhi won the team, Delhi won the game with almost two overs to spare. But thanks to a magnificent half century from Jake, I'm, is Delhi starting to find their combination or was it kind of a freak win that they, they're going to go back to losing ways soon? No, so I think Delhi is the kind of team who can easily get you five or five wins, right, out of these uh, fourteen games, five to six. Yeah, yeah, and I think they have the potential to do that. I think they have been plagued with injury. It doesn't 
take away from how bad their performance has been. But the minute you have Kuldeep back in the mix, the minute you've got Mukesh back in the mix, suddenly things are different. I mean, don't forget Kuldeep picked up three wickets, right? And then Mitch Marsh is injured and that's where Jake comes Jake. in. Yeah. So first of all, kudos to him. I think he did a fantastic job. It's not easy on your debut in India tackling spin to be able to play like that. So I think that was phenomenal. I think Maxwell in December tweeted about him and said he's the next big thing. And so I'm glad they've given him game time because if you are losing, you need to change things up. And I think, yes, your question is, you know, whether Delhi is finding the combination. I think so. I think if Mitch Marsh comes in, you kind of replace um, Shea Hope with him. And I think that's a decent lineup, right? Uh, It's just about where you play these different players. So, Yes, overall, I think Delhi is looking better. They are going to gain some momentum. But remember, Delhi is basically going to spoil the party, right? Anyone who's looking for an easy win, I think they're going to have to look twice. Yeah, I think very interesting. I, I and, and well said, I think ability to win five to set, five to six, maybe even seven games, but not enough to obviously get top four. But I realized as we were talking, rushing through this, because there's a lot to cover, in the Bangalore-Bombay game, we talked about DK... We talked about um, Ishan Kishan. We talked about Sky. We did not talk about Bumrah picking up five for 21. And I just have to have to quickly mention it because that is just almost how much we take this guy for granted. Of course, I had him in my fantasy, lead, fantasy team the day before and then I didn't take him for this game. But how brilliant. I mean, what a spell that was, man. It just completely, completely changed the game. In a, in a match where, where almost 400 runs were made, to make to bowl five for twenty one is just astounding. I mean, I don't know what to say. I think every time this guy comes on, the opposition looks to take singles, play him out, and then you're you're kind of having to realize that if four overs go for twenty four, in the balance sixteen, you're gonna to have to make minimum ten to eleven runs per over to try and achieve par scores of one ninety, right? Mm-hmm. So it is very hard for oppositions now with Bumrah bowling the way he 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 is and. Wickets are just going to be kind of a result of his process. Otherwise, even a zero for 20 and four overs is match winning, in my opinion. Yeah, and he was doing that for quite a while because teams were just willing to waste the overs. And now if he's going to give only the 20 runs but pick up two, three, five wickets, it's just just unbelievable. Uh, right, that takes us to the weekend. And Varun, let me quickly ask you, how do you feel about not having double headers on Saturdays? It t- it takes a little bit of the fun away from me. To be it honest. does. I mean, I'm sure you're happy given your time zone. I but am and it, I'm not. Like 5 a.m. is not a great start, but like I wake up around 6, 6.30 and I'm ready to watch and I have yeah. to wait till 9 on Saturday. Unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. So for me, it's, yeah, it's disappointing because the time zone really works for me Saturday, Sundays. And so I wish there were more, but I understand that they need to stretch it out to kind of May 26th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it, it, it does require this, but hey, I'm glad that Sunday still has them. Yeah, we still have the Sunday doubleheaders, but let's talk about Saturday's game then this week. Very interesting kind of strategic decision. So Punjab batted, nobody in the top order did great. We've been there this journey before. Uh, and Ashutosh Sharma gave, made a re- really nice looking 31 to get them to some semblance of decency with 147. Still not a good enough score. Varun, Joss Butler's out. New player comes in. Okay. Let's see, I'm, I'm double-checking his age. Uh, let's see, 25-year-old, Maharashtrian player, Tanush Kotia, comes in, and he opens the batting. And in the Ranji Trophy, from what I've been reading, I haven't followed him this career quite as much, but from what I've been reading a roundabout or just after the game, he has he bats at eight or below. I mean, eight, eight, let's let's even say bats at eight. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he is not an opening bat. He's not, has had a great Ranji season from, again, what I read, but batting lower order in completely different game situations. What could possibly have been in a team where you have Sanju Samson, and you have potentially some other names in Dhruv Jurels, et cetera, who can get promoted up. What could possibly have been the reason to send an unknown entity? I mean, almost almost lost them the game, and I don't hold anything against him. He's playing out of position, but I, I hold it against Samson, to be honest, right? Yeah, so I think this is the Sunil Narayan factor. Yeah, you and were I saying like this. like yeah. anyone who can swing is going to be promoted up the order. And... I say this in the context of what our discussion is going to be two matches from now, which is yeah. Ajinkya Rahane came out to open the batting. 
And clearly, again, these are all players, I think, who with the field up and the fast bowling can get you 30 to 40 very, very quick runs. Yeah. And I think that was the only objective. Now, it didn't work. It's a one-off risk. I think Butler is going to come back clearly. So it's a risk. It did not pay off. The Rahane move did not pay off. And so, again, it comes back to if you're going to suck up these balls, it's going to be an issue. But if you can get even 10 runs of six balls, I don't think anyone's going to blame you. Yeah, I mean, fair. I think that's a good point. Jaiswal ended up continu- continuing his decent form from the previous game. Uh, still took some work and Hetmeyer at the end, I mean, hit a couple of massive sixes and got them over the line. But yeah, dangerous there for a little bit. I think the idea, the high risk high reward of an opener who, you know, it's just a, such a such a non-traditional way to think about openers. But to your point, maybe it'll be dubbed the Sunil Narayan effect. And that's, uh, th- and that's, that's how it's going to happen. All right, Varun, then we get to the doubleheader. So the first, first match of the doubleheader was KKR versus Lucknow it, at the Eden Gardens. And you mentioned the Sunil Narayan effect. Uh, he did end up coming into open, didn't end up making too many runs. But yeah, I mean, Lucknow again made 161. So they're, they're just about, they, maybe they've overplayed they, that they're stat. They're that stat too and seriously. They just, yeah, they're just about, yeah, I, they're just about getting to it, right? And I mean, not, but only batted at just over a run a ball. Decock batted just over a run a ball. He's been pretty bad form. Other than Puran, who made 45 runs of 32, like Rahul made 39, just nothing really exciting about this team, right? Yeah, there's, there's just nothing. Like, they don't have their batting order clear. Why isn't Stoinis batting at three? If Rahul is going to bat the way he does, which is just frustrating the living daylights out of me now. But if Rahul is going to continue to bat in this fashion, where he goes at a run of ball, hits two sixes at the end, and then gets out, and then his strike rate is 130, 140. Yeah. It's just play Stoinis up, right? Give Puran the back, play Stoinis up, and then get, you know, yeah. Badoni in the middle. Like, it just... It doesn't make sense. Something is not working in this team. Yeah. And you can't keep making 161, 165, 166 and expecting to win. It's it's not going to happen. The other teams are better than that. Yeah, and you've, your bowlers have defended at some point. I mean, couldn't today feel salt? Uh, unbelievable. Like, it was a one-man show. Shreyas backed it, him at the yeah. end. Like, just stayed on the other side taking I mean, singles. basically but, uh, 38 or 38. So backed him yeah. is very literally just backed. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, at that point, when you have a guy going at that rate, I'm okay with somebody biting out about a run a ball. Like when you have somebody just going absolutely berserk, I'm okay with it. I think it, the problem is doing it when there's nobody hitting on the other end, right? That's when it starts to become yeah. more of an and, issue. And again, it comes down to, if we think of, a, like, I can't think of a game where neither Salt Narayan or Russell have Has been not needed. performed yeah. and KKR as well. So this is a risk. Yeah, very, very interesting. Right, Varun, that brings us to the last game of this week that we're going to try to cover. And that is this morning's, or this morning for me, last night for you, Mumbai Indians versus the Chennai Super Kings. And a lot to talk about on this one. But I want to start with this discussion and we'll come back and talk about Dhoni, I promise. We talked about Ayush bad Dhoni in the last game. We'll talk about MS good Dhoni in this game if you want. Um, Nice. That's been a running joke on our WhatsApp group. But yeah, Varun, you guys talked about Virat Century just over a week ago, in a losing cause. It's happened a couple of times to him. I think two or three out of his eight T20 centuries have been uh, in losing causes. Rohit Sharma today. The stats will say 105 of 63. A strike rate of 166.67, not out. And the team fell short by what was what it ended up being, 20 runs. Yeah. What somebody who watched the match saw was a very different type of innings progression and almost a yearning to start going more aggressively a little sooner. But also, equivalently, you saw Ishan Kishan started decent, got out. Sky got a second ball duck. Tilak was hitting nicely and perished. Hardik Pandya absolutely like absolutely destroyed the momentum in the innings. And so you, you, could, you, could, you could always equal part C, nobody else batted well, and... Yes, but the guy who ate up most, more than half the deliveries didn't quite pace his innings correctly. And help me understand what side of this discussion you're on, because I just don't know. I don't know how no, I feel about it. I also don't know. I think here's the facts, right? There are two guys who have hit centuries in this World Cup, apart from Butler. 
One is Rohit, yeah. the, uh, the, this uh, IPL. Yeah. One is Rohit, the other is Kohli. Right? And now we're, con- we're criticizing how they hit the 100. So it needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. I also have to call this out because Rohit's 161 balls got a lot of credit. Rohit, uh, Kohli's 166 or 67 balls got so a lot of criticism. Right. Yeah. And both lost. So I don't get it. Why are you kind of criticizing one guy and not and praising the other when the net outcome is similar? I do agree that Rohit is playing better in the power play. He's playing more attacking and he has adapted his game. So we have to give him credit there. But net-net, it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. right? You don't have to say Kohli's bad and so Rohit is good. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that. I think the question is just, just on approach, right? Is it... Do you, do you value a 20 off nine balls and out more than you value a, a hundred off 60, let's call it 61 balls and, and out? Or, and, and if so, do you need everybody to consistently be making 20 to 30 off their nine balls and, and you back till number nine? And yeah. then if you happen to be 76 for six, then you, you back the guys of the lower order to take you through. Like, but, but India doesn't have that today. We have at yeah. least three number 11s on, on average on our side. So sometimes four, sometimes four. Yeah, and so, so it's it's yeah. the team composition, it's the team balance. It's if people can go at thirty of ten, like you said, do it. But not everyone can, not everyone will. And so I think what it happens is that if you've got a Rohit or a Kohli batting, the other guys need to step up. And if they don't, the pressure on these to keep building because what are they supposed to do? They can't get out. Yeah, they can't play reckless shots. And so they have to build that innings. Yes, they should both be going faster, but I don't see too many solutions. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, if you think about what was the, probably the, the more most popular majority opinion on probables for the India side in the T20 World Cup before the IPL started, I mean, the reality is Virat and Rohit are the only two who really put runs on the board. Jaiswal is starting to find his form back. Four days ago, we would have said Jaiswal's in horrendous form. Sky played one good knock, but uh, then got out for duck. Like so, so not not a slam dunk. Hardik struggling, struggling big time. Ravindra Jadeja struggling reasonably big. The, Bumrah also obviously walks in, no question of us. Yeah, but but Siraj has had a horrendous. Oh, Siraj, like Harbhajan Singh said, this he's looking tired and. I went back and thought about it. I don't think that guy's had a break. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe in eighteen tired. months. Yeah. yeah, I think he's just tired. He's not looking good. Uh, so Kuldeep and Bumrah are looking fantastic. Yeah, Rohit and Kohli are looking good, not great. Uh, but apart from that, you're right. In the in the, in the list of probables, yeah. it's not looking that promising. I mean, Ra- Rahul is basically batted his, himself outside, out of a spot, right? Yeah, his batting position and the way he's batted, I think he's yeah. batted himself outside, out of a spot. I think Gill has the outside chance. Uh, Jaiswal, I think, will be there for what he's done in the last 18 months. Rinku Singh is the other guy who's just not getting an opportunity to show his skill. Correct. I think it's harsh to say he has had a, not a, has had not as good an IPL. But again, then you have other guys breaking down the doors. Riyan Parags and Shashank Singhs and Ashutosh Sharmas. And these guys are breaking down the doors. And that is actually where the magic of the IPL, right? That's where these guys come from. Sky, we discovered him from the IPL. Then, of course, we wanted him to play test cricket for two years. and That's we, the problem. We go that's, to the other that's extreme. That's why you got to hold your game. horses. But, yeah, I think I am looking forward to next week's discussion. I think we'll have 80% overlapping players, but 20% will be different. Yeah, it's going to be great. Start thinking about you, for, for you, all of our listeners. Start thinking about your playing 11s and your probable 15s for the T20 World Cup. Varun, it's always a blitz getting through seven, eight games in, in one quick discussion, but it's always fun to relive it a little bit. I'm excited about some of the big games this week. I know Delhi takes on Gujarat, which will be a big uh, b- a big clash, if you will, uh, at least from the lens of Delhi fans. Uh, Punjab takes on Mumbai. You also have KKR taking on RCB, and RCB will be looking to get some points on the board. So lots of exciting games to come. I think that's a wrap. We already did our Fantasy League uh, discussion as well we we covered everything we wanted to if you're listening to us on youtube again hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you are listening to us on uh whatever podcast app we are at one tip one hand on all the social medias twitter facebook instagram we have a discord network we would love to have you join uh where everybody talks a lot about cricket and that is basically it Varun, thank you so much for joining me it has been a great time great chat Uh, This is the Edges and Thudges Cricket Podcast, and we will see you next week. Thank you very much.